Welcome to Full Circle, I'm Suzanne McAllister. Well, if you are a regular viewer of our program, and we hope that you are, you know we end every show with music. We have an awesome performer today. Her name is Stephanie Turner, and she will delight. So be sure and stay with us. But first, we're going to talk with Reverend Jeremy Summers. He is the author of the book, Awakening Grace. Uh, he is the uh, a minister at the Wesleyan Church, and he joins us now. It's good to see you. Thank you, it's good to see you. So I want to start with the title, Awakening Grace. Why did you select that title? Yeah, um, well, a friend of mine and I both wrote this book, and he's a church planner in North Carolina um, on the campus of, of University of North Carolina called Love Chapel Hill. And in, in writing this book, um, we were drawn to a quote by a reformer from the 1700s, a Christian reformer named John Wesley. And he talked about how um, the, the soul, how God breaks in into the soul and is a light, the first dawn of the soul. And so this idea that God is at work before we even knew he was at work. And so Awakening Grace um, is a title that for the reader allows them to know and understand that, um, that the spiritual practices which we talk about is a way to awaken our soul to who God is. So I want to ask you, because you're, you're young and you, you get this really big concept, when you're talking to teenagers, for instance, how, that maybe they're not a believer, how do you start to explain this whole concept of Jesus and God? And, you know, it's just hard for some people to really embrace. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, first of all, there's a lot of... Um, legalism that might be um, in someone's life when it comes to religion. So they, they, they view religion as, as laws or do's or don'ts or who's in, who's out. And so um, what we try to explain in, in Awakening Grace is we come from it from the angle of more of a heart issue versus an issue of, of legalism or of, of works. And so in talking to a, a young person, it's saying, where um, are you at with spirituality? Where are you at with seeking after who God is? And what are the things that you're experiencing in your life to get more to the heart issue versus an issue of just knowledge? That's a big difference, yeah, the heart big, and, the, and the head. Yeah. So you talked about uh, spiritual formations. Define that and why this isn't that. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we talk about spiritual formation, uh, we're looking at the whole person. And so a lot of times we discuss or we try, try to compartmentalize our life in different sections. So we say, um, I deal with the mind or the heart or you know, we talk about the soul. Um, even those that, that might not um, uh, be a Christian still talk this type of language. And so we all are made up of, of in the spiritual sense, um, the spiritual realm. So when we talk about spiritual formation, really what we're talking about is the shaping of the whole person. Um, so how do I treat my wife? How do I um, help those in my community? How do I serve those overseas? Or how do I support someone who's hurting? Um, those are part of the shaping of the whole person that we describe in this book. So tell me more about the backstory about this book. Yeah. Um, well, your question about uh, young people, um, how do we um, or how do I um, talk to young people about Christianity or living a life um, with Jesus? and Matt and I were sitting at a Waffle House um, in Kentucky um, coming up with this idea of how do we communicate the love that Jesus has for everyone and how do we engage that heart issue, connecting uh, Christ with, um, with each other. And so we were going through our own story and how we were faced with legalism in our life. Um, and, and facing those, those legal issues, um, we didn't really understand at times that Christ was present that he loved us no matter what, that um, through his grace, we we're able to come to him and be who we are and uh, try to live that out. And so um, that's where this, this book was birthed. So now that it has been birthed, <laughs> yeah. what are you hoping people will get when they read this book beyond what you've already told us? Yeah, we really want them to see the freedom that they have in Christ, um, that Christ brings, um, true love, true knowledge, uh, that he gives people a, a place um, to understand who he is. And in that place, um, we really get to experience in fullness 
who we are. And so in that relationship um, with Christ, um, we're able to um, be awakened, so to speak, um, to everything that he wants us to be and to become. Well, certainly the name of the book captures that. Awakening Grace is the name of the book. Our guest is uh, Reverend Jeremy Summers. We will be back to find out more about discipleship after this. circle. If you've just now joined us, our guest today is Jeremy Summers. He is a reverend at the Wesleyan Church and the author of the book called Awakening Grace. Um, Jeremy, you talk about submitting to God's grace. How, how do you define that and how does that process look like to you? Yeah. It's a good, very good question because the idea of submission is not something that in Western culture we really um, enjoy hearing. Right. Um, and really we take in this book the, the foundation, the perspective from John chapter 15 of Jesus telling his disciples um, who he is and who they are. And there's a part in that passage um, where he tells his disciples that I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends because everything that the Father has made known to me, I've made known to you. And within that, what we find is that it's, it's Jesus telling us that when you put yourself in a place to receive, I will make everything known to you that, that God has made known to me. So it's being able to be submissive, not in the negative sense as you were saying before, mm -hmm. but to the extent of being able to be open to that message. Right. It's more of a, a perspective, a posture of receiving and understanding um, versus giving up someone's freedom. Um, so that's where um, we read through scripture of kind of denying yourself. Uh -huh. But what we find is actually in denying ourselves, we actually become more fully what we were created to be. And I, I, I'm glad you said that because certainly as my walk in faith has gotten stronger, um, I really feel that that understanding and that knowing is there and it is such a gift. And uh, I, I think so many people are searching. So how does your book help with those people who are still searching, who are uncertain? Yeah, it, I think this book actually gives people the permission to keep seeking and to understand that seeking is part of the salvation process, of part of receiving God's knowledge and understanding of how to live and how to live within the framework which he's given us through scripture. Um, so in the submission, it's kind of like a farmer. Um, we talk more about um, in this book, uh, spiritual practice is more approaching like a farmer versus the factory. So versus mastering something, we become a student of it. And so anytime you're a student, you know it takes cultivation, it takes time, it takes effort, but in that process, um, you begin to learn and understand um, fully what, what you're learning about. And so I think in that time, you realize that there's freedom of exploring, of understanding, but within it you find truth and love that only God provides. Sure, sure. You talk about discipleship a lot. What do you mean by that and how, uh, how can that be a, a beneficial way of, of giving back? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, part of being a disciple, um, or probably a better way to look at it is everyone's a disciple. They're a disciple of someone or something. They're following someone or something. The question is who or what. And so when you look at uh, this book, what we're asking is saying, who um, are you following and are you following the ways of Christ? And so a simple way of looking at discipleship in, uh, from this perspective is, um, are you truly giving yourself over to the ways of Jesus and are you willing to follow him, follow the way? So that's a challenge for some people. Mm -hmm. yep. Why do you think that is? It's just the way it is. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, one of those things where it's a matter of of, are we willing to um, give ourselves? Um, do we believe? Do we actually understand and fully um, comprehend the beauty that Jesus gives us um, in, in, in knowledge, um, in the heart of giving life? And if we do, then we'll follow. I think one of the best ways, though, in understanding it is 
is, is being mentored, is coming along someone else, living life together. We live in such an individualistic culture that we tend to be alone. And so I think the best way to do it is to find others that are living such a life and learning from them. And, and I think that speaks really true to the elders of our communities, the elders of our churches, and being able to, to share and learn and keep that generational uh, story going. I think you address a little bit about, in some of your talks, about that multi-generational right. message. That has to be a challenge for you as a, a reverend. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, and I think the family um, is a central piece of, of this process of experiencing spiritual practices of, of faith development and such. And so it's a crucial, crucial piece of this. Are, are you concerned uh, about the breakdown of the family and what that has meant for society and, and uh, a greater sense of yearning in, in a lot of our young uh, children today? Yeah, um, I am concerned and I think the church has an opportunity to be a voice in that. Um, and so the question is, will we be that voice? Well, that's a good time to take a commercial break, and we'll think about that, and we'll be back after this. is Awakening Grace. We're talking to the author today. We've talked a little bit about spiritual practices throughout our conversation today. Give me some specifics and highlight what you mean by that. Yeah, um, spiritual practices would be, um, in our eyes or in light of, of what we've written, um, places where we can experience um, the presence of Jesus. Um, so that could be prayer, it could be worship, it could be, um, we talk um, some more unique practices that aren't talked much about in the church, like creative expression, so the arts, um, painting and, and whatnot. Um, talk about Sabbath, which is more of a, an Old Testament practice that I think the evangelical church has lost, that idea of Sabbath keeping. Um, and in that one, what's unique with, with that practice that we talked about, it's a, it's a practice of not time lost, but time redeemed. Um, and so when we talk about practice, it's more of, of um, putting effort um, to receive um, the grace of, of Jesus. Our society has just gotten so busy with so many other things. We have forgotten the Sabbath. We have forgotten that to really deepen our faith, it takes a commitment on our part. Isn't that a lot of what you're saying as well? We need to set aside time to learn and to grow. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that goes back to our earlier conversation about the heart issue versus just the mind. So I can no scripture, I can say a lot of prayers, I can sing a lot of songs, but when it, um, it's not until it transforms the heart that I come with the right heart that it puts me in a place to receive the grace. And that's where the transformation takes place. That's why you have um, maybe teenagers or young people that could be further along in their faith development than an older person who just goes through the actions. Um, and that's the beauty of, of transformation is that it breaks down barriers. It's not dependent on who's in, who's out, economic situations, social status. Um, so that's the, I think in this, in Awakening Grace, we kind of address that. Even we talk about a practice of mercy and justice. How does that bring forth, usher in the kingdom of God um, versus the kingdom of man? So talk a little bit about, uh, about that. Yeah, um, well, let's uh, um, look overseas um, with issues in the Middle East or um, issues in the United States, um, we find that um, we tend to protect our own. And what the practice of mercy and justice says is that we are not citizens of this world, but citizens of heaven, so to speak. Um, and so Christ is very much here as he is there. So um, Dallas Willard talks about how, we, how do we think we're going to enjoy heaven later if we're not living it out or enjoying it now. And so the practice of mercy and justice is the very much the outward act of Christ now. And it, it's so ironic that, you know, there, the, there's always a war going on. But if we were to really live and believe that practice, 
uh, then we could experience more of heaven on earth while we are here. Yep. But it is that humanness of us that keeps us from from being able to achieve that higher higher grace, which right. is again what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly, and so that's where the practice comes in. Um, how do you know what Jesus says? How do you know how he thinks? How do you know how he acts and loves? Is through reading the word, through experiencing the spiritual practices, through being in tune, through prayer, through community with others. Um, you know, the outward focus of living it out in the community. So it's all part of it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in your church, uh, tell me what, what's next for you. Obviously, yeah. I, I told you during the break that I think you're wise beyond your, your years <laughs> and you, and you have a, a good way of, of talking about some very complex things. What, what lies ahead? Yeah, actually, Matt and I uh, just finished, up, finished uh, a teaching series for this DVD series uh, that'll be out um, later this summer. Um, and so, so we're working on this kind of the next project for us, but in terms of the church, um, we're looking at how do we live this out? What does this look like um, um, to live this out in, in activity in, in the present tense? Um, and so the best image that I can give is like a triangle where, where God is at the top, um, we're on the right side in terms of our identity, and then we're obedient. And so what this does is we, our identity is in Christ, we live with Him, and through the, our obedience, we're able to experience this grace, this awakening grace for all of us. And just being able to take that leap of faith and be around people that can help nurture those very things. Exactly. Well, I wish we had more time, but we are out of time. If you want more information about uh, Amazing Grace, you can go to Amazon.com. Also, we have another uh, website up on the screen to contact uh, Jeremy Summers, our guest, the author of the book, Awakening Grace, and he is a reverend at the Wesleyan Church. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, we are back with our music next. Musical Showcase is brought to you by Flanner and Buchanan, helping families tell the story of their loved one's life. Musical Showcase is brought to you by Flanner and Buchanan, helping families tell the story of their loved one's life. Well, on behalf of all of us here at LaCie Broadcasting, we're glad that you could tune in today. And coming up to round out our program, we have singer-songwriter Stephanie Turner singing Sacrifice of Praise. And we'll see you next time, Full Circle. We raise the incest melody. Lord, you have granted us spiritual clemency, power to slay every enemy. You're worthy of glory, honor, and praise. We lift our voice. Our voice we raise a banner of sacrifice, a banner of praise. Everybody, let's praise our God. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise to you, Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice. Praise to you, Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise to you, Lord. We're singing glory, honor, power, dominion. We're singing glory, honor, power, dominion, praises, we sing to your name. We bring the sacrifice of praise, we bring the sacrifice of praise, we bring the sacrifice of praise.
sacrifice of praise to you, Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise to you, Lord. We're singing glory. Closed captioning provided by Hear Hear. Hear Hear, discreet hearing solutions at affordable prices. 317-731-5386.